guys, welcome back to another video. I wanted to get this video up before the end of the night. It's been about five or so hours since the Xbox Game Showcase ended. I've let everything sink in, talked about the showcase on different podcasts and everything, but I want to make a video here giving my full thoughts as to where I think Xbox is right now after the showcase and what I thought about the showcase in general. So obviously 2023 so far has been a very interesting year for Xbox. It started off, in my opinion, extremely strong. And I still think as we are going through June right now, it has been a very good first six months of the year for Xbox. Now, obviously the big blemish on the record for a lot of people is Redfall because of the way that game did release with all the technical issues. And then the big elephant in the room was the 30 FPS on the Xbox consoles. But I still think overall, what that aside, it's been a good first six months. So the Xbox Game Showcase had to come. They had to prove that Xbox was a ecosystem to be involved in. Do you want to purchase Game Pass? Do you want to go purchase an Xbox for? And I think they did an absolutely phenomenal job. I'm giving the showcase a nine out of 10. I think it's probably one of the best showcases that I can remember in recent history in terms of giving us a slate of games in a nice, concise manner and not over blowing it, not putting too much bloat or filler that we've seen in previous showcases just this year already with the, the Summer Game Fest, which had so much filler that it got boring and the PlayStation Showcase, same thing. The Xbox Showcase did a phenomenal job with giving us a bunch of games that a lot of people are going to want to play. Now, obviously, every game on the list that they showed off isn't going to be for everybody. There is, I'm not going to be playing every single game here that they showed off, but there's at least, at least a handful of games that I'm absolutely going to be playing and completing from beginning to end from the looks of what we have seen based off of in-engine stuff they showed off or any of some of the gameplay that they did show off. First of all, they started off the show with a huge bang with Fable. Now, Fable to me, with this new look to it, it looks pretty good. Like graphically looks incredible. They still have that same humor. Very interested to see where they're going to go from here. How big the world is. Are they going to keep all of those things that make Fable great with the decisions and the good and evil and all that type of stuff? I'm assuming that they will, but I think that's going to be great. Next up, we have Avowed, which... A lot of people were saying it looked much different than the original game that they teased a couple of years ago, and it does, but it still looks great. It has that colorful aesthetic to it, kind of similar to what Obsidian has been doing with the Outer Worlds. So I'm actually not that surprised that they would go in that direction, kind of take stuff that they've already built, kind of take stuff that they already knew, and translate it over into a more dark style of game, which is going to be avowed. You can see the gameplay, though. Still looks very fun. You have the magic, you have the weapons, and you can see that overall there's going to be lots of dark settings in this game in terms of the characters and everything. It's going to be a much more mature game, I will say, from Obsidian, which has me very, very excited. And seeing gameplay of this is something that people wanted to see last year, and we finally got it here. They threw that in there into the middle of the showcase. Now, they showed off a bunch of others. So I'm not going to go over every single game because I'm sure you've heard a lot of people talk about everything that they did show off and, and go deep dive into every game. but some of the other highlights that got me very excited when I walked away from this show was Clockwork Revolution from In Exile. really reminds me of Bioshock. And also it's In Exile with their RPGs. And, and we know the great jobs that they have done with the Wasteland series. South of Midnight is Compulsion's new game, which I think is very, very cool looking. But I still kind of want to see more from that. That was just a very small, quick teaser style of trailer to see the aesthetic that they are going for and the setting that they are going for, which from what we understand, based off of reports previously, that it is gothic styles in the Deep South. And you could kind of see that here with the South of Midnight the trailer. But it's great to see that they finally announced this. They also showed off Star Wars Outlaws, which we're going to see more about at the Ubisoft show tomorrow. And that one as an opening game came out of left field. I don't think anybody expected this. And I thought it was a great choice to throw that in there at that point of the show itself. Again, it's one of those games that probably nobody had on their predictions list as to what was going to be showing up at this showcase. So it was very, very cool. Now, when it comes to some other stuff that they showed off, we got the Forza Motorsport release date which is great but in terms of smaller stuff dungeons of hinterberg to me looks like it's going to be a ton of fun with the combat style the fast paced i'm wondering if this is going to be a linear game or if this is going to be like a procedurally generated souls like game who knows but it does look like it is going to be very very cool in terms of 
just a pick up and play fun style of game. Now, the other huge thing that I think is a big win for this showcase, the fact that they showed off five major games, Japanese games, and three games coming from Atlas. We already knew the announcement of Persona 3, which was Persona 3 Reload coming into Game Pass. And we also knew the announcement of Persona 5T, which is the tactics game coming into Game Pass. But what we didn't know was coming from Atlas was they were going to use the Xbox showcase to show off and announce for the first time their brand new game, Metaphor de Fantasio. I think it's de Fantasio or Ruth Fantasio. I don't know. Anyways, Metaphor which if you like JRPGs, I think there isn't anybody out there who likes JRPGs that saw this and wasn't excited. I mean, it looked great. And to show this off at the Xbox Game Showcase is a huge change in the industry overall, I would say, that nobody would have expected this years ago. We were at a point in Xbox history that Atlas games just weren't showing up on the platform. Persona games were not showing up on the platform. And now we're getting Atlas here to announce games for at the Xbox Game Showcase, games that nobody had ever heard of before. And I think that is a phenomenal change and a lot of great work there that Phil Spencer has done by going to Japan, going to meetings, doing all these things that he said he has been working on and it's now coming to fruition. Then we got a game, one of the games I'm most excited for, a big highlight for me in this entire showcase was Path of the Goddess from Capcom, which is a samurai game. Looks awesome. It just looks like a fun action style of game coming into Xbox Game Pass. I can't wait for that one to actually drop. And there were so many other things. There's so much variety. One of the best things about Xbox and the Xbox ecosystem and platform, which is why I prefer to play on Xbox, is because when they have their showcases like this, they give you that variety. They give something for everybody. And whether this game isn't for you or isn't for your friend or whatever, I, I think especially with this showcase that we had, it is almost impossible to deny that everything that they showed off at the main part of the showcase was a game that would be interesting to somebody within that who was looking at that style of game. It just, they did a great job and they kept it concise. They had no filler. Now my biggest, my biggest complaint about this showcase, which is why it, for me it isn't a perfect showcase, was Hellblade 2. I was very disappointed of the trailer that they showed off for the game. I was expecting gameplay in terms of combat, and we did not get that, which has me questioning, where are we with the combat for Hellblade 2? Now, there is an extended showcase on the 13th, which they may be showing off combat there, but I would have expected them to highlight the combat in their main showcase, which they did not do. And, you know, maybe on the 13th, they do show combat and it's so incredibly good. And it's a huge jump from the first Hellblade that no one's even going to remember about this trailer that they showed off at the main show. I just wish they would have done a better trailer for Hellblade 2 and showed it off. Everybody knows Hellblade 2 is going to look amazing. It's going to be one of the best looking games throughout this entire generation. And that's not a secret anymore. I don't think it does them any benefit at this point to continuously just show off how good the graphics are when they've done that multiple times and we already know let's get to the gameplay let's get to the combat because people are waiting on that there are other highlights like towerborn i'm definitely going to be playing i it was pretty cool to see overwatch 2 actually has single player or narrative content in there now still wakes the deep i mean that's a game that we didn't really see much of but the the atmosphere from that i think is going to have a lot of people excited it was just went on and on with every game that they showed off looking really good. It was almost a perfect showcase again, except for Hellboy 2. And then Starfield. Starfield, I'm going to make another video talking about that. 45 minutes of some of the most in-depth showcasing of a game that I think I've ever seen. So it was just phenomenal. But we will talk about that in another video because there is some news that we will that has been announced now that we can confirm and go over. And that will be my video tomorrow morning. But I just wanted to get these thoughts out. But thank you guys for if you jumped into my stream for jumping in and in watching the showcase with me. And again, thank you for supporting my channel and for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, hit that thumbs up. If you are new here, hit that subscribe and I will catch you guys in the next video.